Well, hey everybody, welcome back to another Photoshop User TV, the place where you can find out all kinds of great stuff about how Photoshop works. I'm Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys along with Corey Barker, but first of all, we need to tell you we are brought to you by Kelby One, the fine makers of this magazine right here. That's right, Photoshop User Magazine. You can get it 10 times a year. It's got all kinds of great articles. This article, this month in March, it's the wedding issue. Mm -hmm. uh, got some great stuff in there. We've done some great articles in there, yep. if we do say so ourselves. Well, yeah, you, you know. know. You know. Yeah. So uh, make sure you check it out. I am Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys, along with Corey S. Barker. Is it S? Yes, it is. It is yes. I yes. just I just pulled a, a thing out of the hat. You know, see, see it sounds so good. It feels Corey natural. S. Barker, it, just feels it does. Rash, yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, Corey? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm here. That's good. I'm That's here always I'm, good. I'm here and I'm breathing. Can't complain. All right. <laughs> we're the Photoshop guys here, and we're just going to jump right in with a tutorial from Corey, and mm -hmm. I have a sneaking suspicion it may be 3D. I'm on a 3D kick lately. I've actually been doing a lot of projects involving 3D, so um, this is actually part of a project I'm working on, and I can't tell you exactly what it is. Sneaky. But I am going to show you part of the project because it's a really cool, demonstrates a really uh, interesting part of 3D in Photoshop. So um, here I have just a simple shape. It's just a circle, and I want to kind of cut it out. I just want to basically create a very thin ring in 3D in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer and give it a base gray fill. When I'm not, when I'm not certain what color a 3D object is going to be, you can never go wrong with gray because it's not too light or too dark. It actually gives you, a, you can see the shapes really well under the lighting. So with that shape or with that color set, I'm going to select the shape and jump right in here and go ahead and create a new 3D extrusion from selected path. Paths give you the cleanest edge to 3D objects in Photoshop, so if you, every opportunity you have to, to use it that way, that, that's the best way. So we can see we've got this kind of ring that's going to really extrude. It looks like a long pipe right now, but um, I don't need it to be that thin, or that thick, rather. I'm just going to bring that extrusion depth down to about here, something like that. You're being kind of secretive about this project. Peter Jackson hasn't contacted you about anything, has he? No, but I'm learning from the best. All right. <laughs> so on that object, I've just brought it back to my front-facing view here, and I'm going to apply a very little bit of a bevel here. I'll do about a 5% bevel on the object there, and if we zoom in very, very closely, hang on. I do not see the bevel. Do you know why? Because I undid it. Let's do like seven. There we go. Oh, you know what? More than that. I'm going to do ten. There we go. All right. It's a little bit of a bevel on that. Now, what I want to create is this kind of wireframe globe. It's just basically just rings that are kind of, you know, arranged in a, in a, in a globe fashion. And in earlier versions of Photoshop when 3D, you would have had to create the ring like I just did here and then create or duplicate the 3D layer however many times you needed it and then merge them together. So this means a lot of processing power because you're, you're, multi you're merging multiple 3D objects. And what they did in the past couple of versions of, photo of 3D is add a feature that kind of takes the weight off of being able to do that. When you have an object created, and you go and select that object here in the 3D panel, go into the flyout menu here, and there's this thing called Instance Object. Now this is probably this like 3D's way of creating a smart object of another, you know, basically creating an instance of another object. It's linked to the master object itself. So you'll notice there it is. It appears as layer one in here, but notice there's no properties attached to it. The original layer one has its properties attached, but none here. Whatever changes I make to the to this um, master shape will cascade down to all the other. It's instances. almost like a symbol. Yes, exactly. In, in Illustrator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now. Once the object is created, you don't really see it because it's actually right in line with the original shape. So I'm going to rotate my view here a little bit, and I'm going to select that object and go in here and use the axis widget and just rotate that shape around. Now, if you really want to get precise, I'm going to go in here to the Properties panel and go to the last tab here, which is the Coordinates tab, and you'll notice I've rotated it on the y-axis 73 and a half degrees so far. If I want it to be a perfect right angle, of course, I'm just going to have to go ahead and set that to 90. And there it is. So now if I rotate my view, we've got a pretty good thing happening here. So I'm going to go back to that instance. And now I'm going to create an instance of the instance. So we're just continuously linked objects. And I'm going to change that angle to 45. And do that again. I'm going to create another instance. And then we'll change that one to negative 45. So now 
I have my globe ring created from one object, and now I have a, basically a master object, and now I've got other instances of that object going around there. So that was pretty much it. I just wanted to show you how <laughs> the instancing of an object can save you a lot of processing power and time when you want to create multiple objects of the same thing. So you're not having to go through the, the pains of creating the object and then going and merging it, merging it, merging it, and just making it um, that much more taxing on your processor. So now my question is, let's say you've got it to that point and you want to make some changes. Can, can you make a change to the color or something? And, and let's, will it, it change everything automatically? Well, let's find out. So I'm going to go. It's like the, an infomercial. How about now, Corey? So I'm going to go into the extrusion, and let's just say I'm going to change it to, let's just do a red color here. So now you can see that cascades to every single shape because I changed the master object here. And if I go and do the front, let's go and say, do the edit texture, and I'll do green. We'll make it like a Christmas ornament or something like that. So you can see how it's changed all those sides. Which so is not, another, so why, another reason why you want to do the instance thing. Another is, reason you're saving a tremendous amount so of time. So much faster. If this was all separate um, rings that I had merged together as two separate layers, I would have had to go in and each layer or each layer item uh, and change its color instead of it you know, cascading like this. So this is another advantage of being able to do something like that. But again, like I said, this is part of a, a project I'm working on. You'll see very, very soon. Well, and I, I love this because it's got so much potential. It's so easy for our, our viewers to see it, understand it, hopefully. Mm -hmm and get a lot of inspiration for how they could play with that. Yeah, there's, yeah. And a lot about a lot Photoshop, and you know, everything we do about Photoshop, a lot about it is just understanding how the features work. Yep. If your creativity is there, it's going to find a way to make the best use of that feature. It's just understanding how it works. Because as I dug into 3D, and there's very few, I mean, I'm, there's very few resources on Photoshop 3D right now. I mean, it's really growing, but there's very few resources on it. So what I had to do was dig in and really figure things out myself. And once I understood that, then I thought, well, if it does that, I wonder if it'll do this. And that's how, one, that's how one thing leads to another. Pete can attest to this as well. It's just we sit in and do our experimenting, and then that's how we come up with stuff. So, sure. Well, hey, let's take a break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk to you all, and I'm going to dig down into the whole blend if sliders, because I know it's so powerful. We love blend Absolutely, if, yes. mm -hmm. but it can be a little confusing. And you tend to go up top, and then you go, I'm going to leave that alone. Well, right. we're going to dig into it when we get back. Cool. We're going to take a break, and we'll Thanks. be right back. I have an extraordinary number of images of my children. I have them everywhere. Some are on Facebook and some are on Instagram. Some are literally stuck in a hard drive in a computer in my garage. If I lost those images, it would hurt. With Miley, I have everything archived and saved and having everything together in one place is kind of a dream. Milio is a great tool to help me better manage my most important method of communication, photography. Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to Photoshop User TV. I want to talk to you about our blog. The Kelby One blog is fairly new, and our own Julio, cool guy. If you don't know Julio, you need to you need to go on there. Just write a message. Just send him a message. But right here, you can see it's KelbyOne.com/blog. It is where you're going to find out everything of the latest that's going on on Kelby One. New courses, new tutorials, news, all kinds of great things on there. And you'll definitely want to check that out. It is updated daily, so there's a lot of great information on there. I've even got look. There's a video I did. Pete's got stuff in here. We all have. Look, there's Scott. It's a cornucopia of stuff in there. It, new stuff every day. So go check it out. We love Julio. Mm -hmm. I met him down by the schoolyard, yeah. but that's a whole nother. Okay. Pete segues nicely into his tip, which is blending, sort of. <laughs> all right. So we love the blend if sliders, mm. but they can be a little scary. They can be a little confusing. And so I thought I'd do kind of a, a demonstration of how they work. Um, we've talked about before using blending modes. You, the main ones that you use are going to be multiply to darken, screen to light, and then you've got overlay and soft light to add the contrast. Well, if you can think about the blend if sliders as sort of like those things on steroids, it will help. So what I've done is I've pulled up this grid over here, this color grid with also the uh, gradients on the side. If I double click in here and bring up my layer style panel, I'm going to slide this over here, running out of room. All right, let's do this. Hold on just a second. I got to cancel that. Let's move this over so you can see it. There we go. Now double click on there, bring that up. We'll bring this over to the side. We only need to see these sliders over here. All right, so I haven't changed my blend mode, which I can up here. I could choose any of the blend modes, but what I'm going to do is I am set on 
this layer right here, the, the block layer. And now I've got two different sliders here. I've got the one that affects, it, it's reading what's going on on the layer I'm messing with, and then it's reading whatever the layer is underneath it and how the two interact. And so right now it's got blend if gray. So now if I take this slider right here, the white slider, and I start moving it over, watch the, the lighter, the white areas start to disappear. It's as if as I'm moving along, watch my gradient is starting to disappear as I go along. It's blending those, it's basically wiping those out. As soon as I reach the threshold of that gray right there, it will disappear. So if I move this over a little bit more, watch that little block right there it disappears. Well, I could take this, bring this back to, to white. I could do the same thing with black. Start watching these over here. As I move this over, it's gonna start knocking out the darker areas. It does not just affect black and white, but you notice it's hitting the, the different colored blocks here as well, depending on their tone. So as I go further and further over, it knocks out more and more of those blocks. So I could eventually get <coughs> to the point where I've only got a couple blocks left because I've moved into the middle. That's handy to know, but there's an extra step in there. If I will take and hold my alter option when I'm grabbing these sliders, I can split these apart. Because if you notice, if I grab the whole thing and move it over, it's pretty clunky and chunky. It takes them all out in one shot. Clunky and chunky? Clunky and chunky. Mm. Whipped, chopped, battered, smathered, whatever. <laughs> But if I split it apart, it gives you, by holding my auto option button, it gives you more of a finesse. Notice that the, the blocks over here are starting to fade away. So you've got a lot more control. So I start moving it over and it, it's a softer blend. It's a gentler blend. Same thing if I come over here and split this one. <coughs> it's softer and gentler. No, See, no, I'd almost think the, the splitting of the slider should be, the, it should be the default. It should be default. And you, it really should. You, you option when you want to slide it as a whole. Right, because you know? that's immediately what you do whenever you get in there, at least what I, I do. Okay, but here's the other side of it. Let's bring these all the way back. It's not just about what's going on on that layer. You've got the underlying layer. So what I can do is I come along here. Nothing's going to happen as I slide this along because it's reading the background and saying how dark is it. It's only, if I guess, it's only going to make a difference when I get right about here. Let's see. As I go along, nothing, nothing, nothing there. It starts to bring in, there's some dark areas in the background that it starts to play with. Uh, but you can see how you can affect that, the, the look of that thing, the blending of it, just by dragging it across. You're going to have more of an impact starting on the lighter area because the background's lighter. As I start to move across, it's going to start chewing through. Oop, I went too far. I wiped it all out. See, that's where the chunkiness comes in. Let's try it by splitting it, and now we can come along, and we can slowly start fading that in. I like to think of it as almost like multiply on the left side and screen on the right side, and mm -hmm. you've got them on sliders for even more control. Mm -hmm. uh, so oftentimes, this stuff does such a good job, you don't have to mess with any <coughs> other blending mode. Um, and so let's do this. So hopefully you understand that. I'm going to cancel that out. That makes sense on, on how it works. Uh, let's do a practical thing here. Let's bring up this right here. Let's say you've got this object, this, this image here that you want to blend with the background. Well, if I come over here to my blend if sliders, I know that I can basically start to get rid of that black and immediately look. It's, it's, it's pretty clunky and ugly, but we understand what's going on now. It's saying anything that's this dark wipe it out. Uh, anything on this side, keep it. But if I take and I split the slider, I can start to drop it in increments and a little more control. Now here's the thing on the other side, if I start wiping out the white, you can start to knock out these areas up here. You can really kind of get some interesting looks. Let's play with the bottom a little bit in, uh, boy, that sounded bad. <laughs> Let's play with the bottom layer. And you can see how you can get really some the underlying layer. Ah. Underlying layer. Thank you. Better than the bottom layer. Um, and so hopefully that makes a lot more sense now that what those two sliders do is all based on tonality. And if you split those sliders, you have a lot more control. And if you understand it's both the layer you're working with and how it's viewing the layer underneath, you can really tweak that to get the look you want without really having to do any more blending besides those two layers right there. Come with me if you want to live. Yes. <laughs>
I love it. No. And the great thing to know about the blend diff sliders, of course, is that it is completely non-destructive right. because it's part of the layer styling. When you apply it and click OK on the layer styling, it actually shows an icon on your layer indicating that you have made a blend, blend diff change and you can go back and modify it right where you left off. So you're not deleting any pixels, you're not doing anything like that. And that's another beauty of it, as how non-destructive it right. is. Right, if so. you jump back over to my, my uh, if I hit OK, you jump back over here, there's the, there's the icon right there, you just double click on it, mm -hmm. and it brings it right back up. And I should say that not only can you uh, do this with gray, but you also with red, green, and blue. Let's mm -hmm. say you wanna knock out a background color or something like that, mm -hmm. you've shot something on a green background, that's a way that you can really work it to knock that out of there. So it's a very powerful tool that's often misunderstood, but hopefully now you will become a blend if master and, uh, right here. On interesting Photoshop. thing, a lot of people think that is a fairly new feature. In fact, if I'm, if I'm right, I believe that's been there since version three. Yep. Uh, so it's been there for quite some time. It's always been that hidden feature that it was rather difficult to find and it's really not obvious nowadays, but now hopefully you have a better. Well, and it's also, oh. When we find something that's a little bit scary, a little confusing, mm -hmm. we just, we work around it. Yeah, exactly. And so many people have seen it and worked around it forever. Mm -hmm. I want you to play with it, get mm -hmm. used to it, and it should really increase your, your Photoshop mm -hmm. skills. Indeed. All right. That just about wraps things up, but we have to do our usual giveaways and ebook deals. Now, this week's Peach Pit ebook deal is, of course, once again, Photoshop CC, the visual quick start guide. So you simply go to peachpit.com slash kelby1, enter the kelby, enter the coupon code. <laughs> I stumble on it every time. Enter the coupon code kelby1 and you can get 40% off the ebook version of that resource. Great resource, especially if you're a beginner, of course. So you, uh, <laughs> You me, got what I need. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, no, we have a book to give away. That's right, I've got yeah, it. Yeah, you got it over there. Yeah, I was going to reach over there, but I thought it looked a little. Got a book, got a book, got a book. Ooh. All right, here we go. This is 100% Kid. See that? Photographer's Guide to Capturing Kids in a Whole New Light. It's out of focus. There it is. Allison Tyler Jones. I find candy, yes. ropes, and duck. Oh, wait, no, no that's, oh, that's something no, different. That's different. But 100% uh, Kid. So if you are, in fact, in kid into kid photography, I know Pete is, and... Uh, I know Pete's working on some stuff with that. But yep. to get this book, how Pete, what do they need to do? Well, Corey, you go to kelby1.com slash contest. Make sure you choose Photoshop User TV from the drop-down menu. Leave your name, comments, whatever. Please leave suggestions for things we can cover, any questions that you have. We will try to get to them. We have some in the hopper that we're going to deal with in the upcoming weeks. Uh, do that. We definitely uh, love to be able to answer your questions. We're here mm -hmm. for you to help you out. So uh, do that, and, uh, and we love to get, still love those jokes. We're getting, getting some good, some good ones, we, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we Every got some strange it, ones. We've got a couple of you out there that you've got some issues. Most, I'm just, I'm just most of them are a little like, eh. <laughs> but every now and then there's that one joke. It's like, ah, clever. Very nice. Yeah. So, uh, but yes, we enjoy all that. We certainly read them all. So be sure to keep them coming in. So, Well, that about wraps it up. Corey, thank I you so, so much for uh, joining me today. Mm -hmm. And guys, thank you so much for joining us here on Photoshop User TV. We will see you next week right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. Take care. Can we, can we exit with the Batman music? Right. <laughs> I forgot how the old Batman show went. I, yeah, I was like, that's not the Batman. <laughs> Funny. All right. Mm -hmm.